And tonight, it is Mississippi State coming to call against the Longhorns of the University of Texas. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin, and welcome to this, our 12th consecutive year of CFA primetime coverage on ESPN. Tonight, we're here in Austin. One week from tonight, we'll be in Clemson, South Carolina, for the matchup between Florida State and Clemson. Then two weeks from tonight, in the Great Northwest, the game between Nebraska and Washington. This is just a hint of some of the outstanding matchups we'll have for you during 1992 at this time every Saturday evening on CFA primetime. Well, now to the matter at hand in tonight's ball game. Jackie Sherrill comes calling back to Austin, Texas. And quite frankly, Texas fans are tired of losing to him. He's beaten up six times in a row. And if I might borrow a phrase from the great Southwest, it's kind of like wearing a straw hat to the Christmas party. Everyone is all at dither over Jackie Sherrill and his six straight wins. Mike Gottfried, they want to see that end. Also, everybody is talking about the new coaching staff, John Makovic and those changes. And of course, that does mean lots of changes for Texas. Well, Ron, John Makovic's brought a lot of new coaches in. A lot of new ideas, and what he's trying to do is build a winning chemistry. Also tonight, look for him to open up the offense. A lot of balance with the run and pass, and to throw a lot of short passes. We don't look for the pass first, but we do look for opportunities to both run and pass, and we're not adverse to throwing the ball right off the bat. Uh, most of the people, when they play us, will have to start out and say, let's defend the pass and let's get that taken care of because we do throw it a number of times. But we're not unusual in college football anymore. I think the influence of the pro game on the college game has changed to the point where everybody's throwing the ball quite a bit. You can score at any given time. It's a, it's a ball control offense, but then the big play's there, and, and if you see it, then you take it. Mike Godfrey, you have been through this situation. What is going through John Makovic's mind at this time? Well, in a new job, John Makovic, first of all, wants to win this game. Second of all, he wants to see the teaching that he's been doing on the practice field, along with his assistants, take place tonight and, and show up here on the field. And third, he wants to make a statement with his offense. If you're an Oklahoma fan, you've got to be happy with their offense right now. He'd like to have the Texas fans leave the stadium tonight the same way. Well, the third man on the telecast this year is once again the large one, Adrian Karsten. He's down on a very warm floor of Memorial Stadium. Adrian, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, down here it's a feeling unlike any other. There's a hundred guys here just thinking about how long they've waited for this moment. Down here you remember what it was like to pretend you were a star playing in your side yard. Your friends, your father may have played college ball, and now you've arrived. No more make-believe. 80,000 people can't wait for you to take the field. The game notes on this one last year's final score again 13 to 6 Mississippi State won it over at Starkville. Makovic's first game against Mississippi State ever. Mississippi State has not lost a road opener since 1971. They are 5 and 0. Oh. And to remind you again the record that Jackie Sherrill has uh, built which is very convincing. He lost his first two games to Texas as the head coach of Texas A&M and then Mike he won five in a row and then with last year's win was the head coach at Mississippi State. He's got a pretty good run going. Texas has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Mississippi State attired in their road white uniforms with the maroon headgears and maroon piping. And Texas in the traditional white pants, no strike, and the burnt orange jerseys. Scott Charetti will kick it off, as you see from behind the Mississippi State bench. Charetti is a transfer coming out of the state of California, Sonora Fullerton. His home is La Habra, California. And Mike, actually one of the best acquisitions, so to speak, for Texas during the offseason. He has been extremely consistent during early season workouts. A look at Sharetti as the two deep men, Tony James and Kenny Roberts, back at a dual safety for Mississippi State. Sharetti moves forward, and we are underway. 1992 CFA primetime. James at the goal line. Hit as he crosses the 33 to the 34 yard line. And now our energizer starting lineups at quarterback. We'll talk about him a lot. People call him the runner, but don't be mistaken. He can pass extremely well. Sleepy Robinson, tough quarterback out of Jackson, Mississippi. The wide receivers, very good. But look for Tony James tonight to get the ball running and also passing. And the offensive line, everyone is intact. Some people rate this line as one of the best, not only in the SEC, but in the country.
Three wide receivers to the left. Shovel pass up the middle. We'll go for a couple as Michael Davis still on his feet and will finally be stopped at the 40-yard line. Let's meet the Texas defense. They run from a 4-3, but the real problem area for the Longhorns this year is this group. Bo Robinson is the only man who has played any at all. The linebackers, well, they're very good and active. Keep an eye on number 42, Anthony Curl, the quiet one, his teammates call him. And in the secondary, Lance Gunn, some people say could be the best strong safety in the country. You judge for yourself tonight, number 16. Running play on second down, and you can see Michael Davis, the 233-pound fullback, bowls his way into Bo Robinson and also Dominic Bustamante, and he will be close to the first down at the 43. Ron, Mississippi State offensive coordinator Watson Brown knows one thing for sure. Texas has had problems in the first quarter on offense. They haven't scored a touchdown in 14 games in the first quarter, so he'll be a little cautious, a little bit patient here with his offense. Kendall Watkins has checked into the game at tight end for Mississippi State. Robinson diving straight ahead, and from where they are marking it across the way, Bo Robinson makes the initial hit, and he is very close to the first down. We could have a measurement. See Jackie Sherrill here. Again, what, what I look for, Mississippi State to do on offense is really attack the two defensive tackles and the middle linebacker of the Texas defense. That's where the question is on Texas defense, the interior linemen. They're strong in the secondary, so they have to make them take the dive before they can get the option moving. Sleepy Robinson, the quarterback, number 15, muffs the snap a little bit. He was going to give the dive to Michael Davis, but after he muffed the snap, took the step too wide and ran into his fullback. Fullback actually knocked him for the first down. <laughs> Michael Davis made the, the first good play of the night for uh, helping Sleepy across the first down marker. This would be a good time to play action pass and try to go up on top on Texas. Now, you've had a couple plays. You have a first down. Let's see what they do here. He's checking off. Pitch to Roberts, and the speedster will take it across midfield, and for the first time tonight, Mississippi State in Texas territory. Tubbs in the tackle. He is brought down by number 96, James Wayne, and number 44, Windsor. Open it up again. Very patient with the running game. This is a tough running football team. Their offensive line, Mississippi State, good size. They're good run blockers. Trying to take advantage of that new defensive front of Texas. Mississippi State with only one setback. As you can see, Roberts has come slot to the right side. Running play, McNeil takes a couple of folks with him. Davis, I beg your pardon, and Bo Robinson holding on for dear life, but Michael Davis has the first down, the big sophomore out of Morton, Mississippi. I want to keep hitting on this fact, Ron, that they're trying the inside of the Texas defense. They're running at James Lane, 36, and Dominic Bustamante, number 95, and also Winfred Tubbs, the middle linebacker. If they have success running inside, then you're looking at Watson Brown, then it's just a matter of time till that option's going to come out and the ball's going to be on the corner. Lane and Bustamante, as we have already stated, not a lot of playing time. And as far as the middle linebacker, Tubbs, he too has been out with injury. Play action, looking long. Got a man wide open. Harris, touchdown, Mississippi State. Perfect call by Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator. You run, you run, you test the middle of the front. They know you run an option technique in the outside. Just a good play Number action 82, pass. Chris Gardner to attempt the point after. Great field position to call that play when you're inside the opponent's 50. That's just a nice call by Watson Brown. Chris Gardner to attempt the extra point. 33 of 35 last year. Yeah. 
So the Bulldog faithful celebrating 11:51 left in this opening quarter, and they have struck like lightning, seven to nothing. Sleepy Robinson, number 15, the quarterback, on a nice play-action pass. You're looking right into the backfield. A good fake to the fullback. Now it's just a streak route on the outside by Willie Harris, and it's man-to-man -man coverage. Texas plays a lot of man coverage in the secondary. The corner just fell down. Here's the reaction from Sleepy Robinson. He knows it's important to get on the board first here in Texas's home field. Mike, one of the things that I had a conversation with Jackie Sherrill about last night as they did their walkthrough here at the stadium was the fact that Mississippi State in recent years has not had great success on the road. And it, what you and I had talked about last evening and again this morning, very important which club did get on top in this ballgame. A, for Mississippi State to take the crowd out of it, and B, just from an emotional standpoint alone. Agree totally with you. And there's a third part. Now they put the onus on the Texas offense that had a lot of problems last year. The strength of this Texas team last year was defense. And so when you can draw blood on that defense and now you make pressure the offense of Texas, you put them on the spot. Chris Gardner will kick it off. Now, during the warm-ups, kicking with the wind, he was kicking it out of the end zone. He is kicking into a slight breeze from the south-southwest. Grady Kavnis is the deep man for the Horns. This will be Kavnis at the five. Good coverage by Mississippi State as he will be denied the 20-yard line. So let's meet the Longhorn offense. At quarterback Pete Gardner, he's a senior out of Houston Lee, four years and his third offensive system. The receivers, Jason Burleson, he's the tight end. He came to town as a very celebrated quarterback. Now he's a tight end. Coaches think he will have a good year. And the offensive front, some question marks here simply because of you. Case in point, number 78, Blake Brockemeyer, is only 19 years of age, a redshirt freshman. Flag on the play and a procedure on this opening uh, play against the Horns. Defensively for Mississippi State, I mentioned the fact that Brockemeyer is the youngest on the field. How about Jerome Brown, 26 years of age. He's the oldest player on the field, so a 26-year-old playing against a 19-year-old. We'll keep an eye on it. The linebackers, very good and active. Boyd will get a lot of recognition. Mark Woodard is the quiet one out of Kosciuszko. Very good outside linebacker. And in the secondary, junior college transfer, Mike James. Bulldogs think they got a very good one in getting him to transfer. We have got motion again. On the near side, one of the people that came across before the snap count is one of the freshmen, Lavelle Pinckney, who was the highly sought after wide receiver out of Washington, D.C. I think this is interesting when you look at Texas, and on the first play, now there's been two penalties, but they brought in both young receivers, Lavelle Pinckney, number 80. Mike Adams, number 83. So what they're saying is, is that we believe in the freshman, put him in. He made a mistake, but he'll be back in. You're going to see a lot of this kid. He's, I've watched him practice two weeks ago. Great player. Great prospect here for Texas. So the freshman come back over to uh, visit on the sideline for a second. Neal comes back in as one of the wide receivers. McLemore to the other side. First and 20. That's a win for San Diego State. Right? Yeah, for sure. Just like Louisville, they had a great chance to uh, to get a big win. Gardner, play action, shoots it across the middle, and Pinkney with his first catch is a long haul. Out across the 25. Well, I'll tell you what, he jumped off sides on the first down, and that's why I say I saw him practice. You and I were out there. This kid is a talented player. He's going to run the post pattern, and Texas runs a play-action pass to get a little bit more protection for Peter Gardier. They want him to start with some success. Nice post route by LaBelle Pinkney, number 80. 7 to nothing. if you've just joined us. Mississippi State on top as we're about to go under 10 minutes to play in this opening quarter. 
Pinkney very large for the speed he has at 6'5", 222. But interestingly enough, Mike, only 5% body fat. Boy, if this is procedure against Texas, you uh, you might see John Makovic lose his cool for the first time on the Texas sideline. This time it's going to be a delay of game. Wow. Well, remember one thing. Now, John Makovic's only had 29 practice opportunities to get this group ready for this ball game, so they're going to make some mistakes like that. They just need to settle down. It's interesting. They went to the spread, the, the shotgun formation, early in this contest. Line to make is the 29. Gardere's pass overthrown. Looked like Roderick Walker was the closest man to it. And for the first time tonight, we will see the Texas special teams and the punting unit comes trotting on. Kelly McClanahan, we waited for a second because Pete Gardere also is a punter, but it looks as though McClanahan is the guy that they will go with to open the ball game tonight. 72 punts last year. That, of course, a team record. And Tony James, number 25, a very slippery one, back at a single safety for Mississippi State. Flag comes down as he gets wiped out at the 41-yard line. It's going to be a 44-yard punt. Reed is downfield on the special teams. Illegal use of hands against Mississippi State. Astor Sizemore is the referee. The crew is from the Southeastern Conference. So we'll take a break. Mississippi State on top, 7-0. Pushing it back, it's a good 10-yard penalty. Welcome back to Austin, Texas. Ron Franklin with Mike Gottfried and Mr. Karsten down on the sideline. Olanda Truitt has checked into the ball game, and we'll get Mike to elaborate more on him. A wide receiver who transferred from Pitt, a young man that, uh, that Coach Gottfried recruited out of Birmingham at a time. 15 yard curl to Harris and throws it perfectly. Willie Matt Garza on the tackle, but with the kind of speed the Mississippi State receivers are showing, Mike, the deep curl could be very effective for them. This is not a good sign for the Texas defense because they haven't even run one option play yet. But the threat of the option, they ran the play action fake to the field. Everybody moved in that direction. That opened a curl to the back side for Willie Harris. Crosses the 47 to the 48. Winford Tubbs, number 44, the big middle linebacker, is there to make the stop. Winford Tubbs, number 44, also in on that last tackle. We're going to work Winford Tubbs. Those two defensive tackles and the middle linebacker are the key to this Texas defense. They have to hold up against that dive. That's too many yards to give them on first down. Five yards is just way too much. It just gives Texas. It gives Mississippi State too many options on second and third down. Garza, the free safety at the line of scrimmage, fakes blitz, stays at home, and the running play will go for the first down as Roberts, with the opening, takes it inside the 45 to the 44. Big offensive line of Mississippi State. Watch him come off the ball and knock the defensive lineman of Texas off the ball. Then the real good box block on Winford Tubbs, number 44, with the good stretch pitch play, and then they're just doing anything they want to on the ground. Well, as you can see, already under nine minutes to play in this opening quarter, Mississippi State with a 7-0 lead. Straight ahead with the carry, Davis. Hit by Vasek, one of the first men, the redshirt freshman out of Smithville, Texas, just south of Austin. And also helping out Dominic Bustamante, a redshirt freshman from Corpus Christi. 
Ron, it's interesting what Mississippi State is doing. You see Watson Brown, the, D, the offensive coordinator. Sleepy Robinson comes up to the line of scrimmage, makes his team go down. He's saying set hut. Then he looks to Watson Brown. There's the look. Now he's getting the play call from Watson Brown from the sideline. Watson Brown is looking at the Texas defense. He sees something, then he relays it to Sleepy Robinson. Pretty interesting concept. It is. So he comes to the line, and all he gives them is a formation. Then they go from that, right? Sets them down, and then he gets the play from Watson Brown. Little pick play on the outside. Roberts, the intended receiver. And I, I don't <laughs> I don't think that's what he intended. Well, everything, what, what Watson Brown is looking at, we'll have to try to figure out as we go along here. But Watson Brown is looking at something at the Texas defense, and then he makes the call, a run, pass, or what specific play that he wants, uh, ran the next play. So we'll keep our eye on Watson Brown. Watson not unfamiliar to the stadium. He was the head coach at Rice University before going to Vanderbilt. Third down, the line to make the 34. Doing it again, Ron. You see him look over to Watson Brown again. Lobs it over the middle. Harris is there, incomplete. And a flag is down on the near sideline. So somebody either got bumped or got held in the wide receiver fast lane. Holding against Texas. Mike, it gives me an opportunity to, to, to take a look at the offensive line for Mississippi State. We talked about the veteran group and how impressive they had been. They have been outstanding so far in this ballgame. They really have, Ron. And when you have an option attack like Mississippi State, you take John James, the left tackle, he's 294 pounds. Sarton, the left guard's 291. The center's 285. The right guard, Shea Bell's 287. The right tackle, Jesse James, is 307. They're run blockers and play action pass. They're not drop back blockers. They're come off the ball, knock you off the ball blockers. But yet they're doing a good job with the pass protection. And that normally doesn't happen with that kind of line, does the it? The play action is what's holding Texas. There's a reverse. Olanda Truitt turns the corner, has five, has ten, caught him out of bounds at the 17 and a half yard line. Cabinus finally bumped him out. Olanda Truitt, number 80. Young man I'm very proud of. Watch the, here again comes the threat of the option. Now there's the toss to Olanda Truitt, but he made a nice move to get inside of the Texas defender. Picks up good yardage. Recruited him out of Parker High School in Birmingham, Alabama. Cecil Leonard was his high school coach. Right now, Mississippi State making it look easy. They lead 7 0. And a first down inside the Texas 20. Getting the play again from the sideline. Galloway with his first carry. Vasic is the man at the bottom of the stack. Maybe a gain of one, and that's it. Ron, it's interesting when you recruit. A lot of things happened, and uh, Orlando wore number 14 at Parker High School. He came to visit at Pittsburgh, and we were sitting watching the Super Bowl in my house, and Jerry Rice caught a couple passes like he always uh, seems to do, and Orlando said, I think I'd like to have 80, and I said, you got 80. And uh, if he wanted 81, 82, 83, he could have had them all. I mean, he's just that fine a receiver and a fine young man. Short a junior out of Birmingham. He set out the year as this year and one more. Robinson, oh, what great footwork, and he almost broke it for the touchdown. Winfred Tubbs is the last man to get a finger on it. This is the third phase of the offense now. Pound you inside, play action to get you off me, and the throw deep and get you moving back. Now the third thing is the option. Winfred Tubbs has the quarterback. Just didn't break down, played a little too high on that play. Jackie Sherrill watching as his offense moving the ball in complete control of this football game. Davis and Roberts the setback on the third down and one. This is the ninth play of the Mississippi State Drive. And now a whistle and a flag. And it cost him having to look back over his shoulder for the signals. I think he got confused. Uh, he has, he's looking to the sideline. He's got enough time. But I think it took so long for him to make the second call that he was going to make. And Watson's telling him, hey, I'm giving you the call. Go with it. Don't try to change the thing. Go with the call that I'm giving you. 
And let's go to the sideline and get a report from Adrian Carson. Adrian. Well, Ron, one of the things Coach Harrell is doing, he acts as his own statistician down here. What he writes down in the sheet of paper is how many yards they're gaining per formation. Good news from the drawing board, the offensive line. They're really going after and feel they can handle the interior lineman for Texas. Screen down or a good draw down for. On third down to play action, and he will bootleg it. Nobody stayed at home at the five, and he will be knocked out of bounds at the one by Lance Gunn. Texas came hard on the inside. Watch a Texas defensive lineman come. Here's going to be the fake, and then Sleepy Robinson around the corner. There's the fake. Watch the Texas players come inside. Lance Gunn saves the touchdown. So at the one yard line, first and goal, Mississippi State. They're already up, seven to nothing. Robertson Davis, the setbacks. Sleepy with the touchdown. the senior out of Jackson Mississippi off the, the block of his center Lee Ford a senior out of Starkville and Gardner will try to put the Bulldogs on top 14 to nothing extra point attempt off to the right and no good and that's one of the few things in this first quarter that Mississippi State has done wrong one more look Sleepy Robinson will score it and we go to break it is Mississippi State 13 Texas nothing. Well Sleepy and the guys uh, may be playing on the road but they're not acting as though it's foreign territory. with the kickoff. Cadmus is the deep man. Check it. Adrian Walker at the 10. Crosses the 20 to the 25. Well, the, the Texas Longhorns uh, have to look at him next week as they have to go on the road to take on Syracuse. And a, that's a ball club, Mike, that might not have gotten enough preseason respect. You know what? There's a, there, that's a team that could go undefeated to the last game against Miami at the carry dome. Adrian Walker has five, has ten, got it off at 12. Knight knocked him down. That's what the Texas offense needs. They need a little spurt. They need something good to happen to them. They jumped off sides the first couple plays. The Texas offensive line, see him come off the ball. Number 29, Phil Brown with a good lead block. And then good burst of speed by Adrian Walker, number 36. Now if they can get the running game going, get a little mix here, a little confidence, uh, they can get back in this thing. Tyler Chapel Hill, he was the 100 meter champion in high school. Pass in the flat intended for Walker, incomplete. With the Makovic system of throwing to his backs a lot, a lot of people think that Walker will catch 60 to 70 balls this year. He's, he's the player that has to catch the short underneath routes and keep the chains moving, along with the tight end, Jason Burleson, number 13. Roderick Walker and Phil Brown check into the lineup as Adrian Walker will get a break. Texas continues to shift those running backs around as Gardier dumps it out. Roderick Walker needed one block and couldn't get it. 
going to be third down and six as Juan Long will get him. And Mike, talk to me about all the movement in the backfield for Texas as far as shifting those backs. Well, it's a Tom Landry system that John Makovic learned when he was with the Dallas Cowboys. And when you move the backs around, you move the tight ends, you prevent the defense from making a design call. They have to wait till you settle down. And when you get a loud stadium sometimes, the defensive backs have to give signals to the change in alignment. And sometimes you mess them up a little bit. And John Makovic is trying to do that to the Mississippi State defense. Overthrown to Walker, and he had his man beaten. Just a little bit too tall, and it'll be third or fourth down, and punting time for the Texas Longhorns. And Pete Gardner knows exactly what happened. He just delivered it a little too rapidly. Tony James. Southeastern Conference coaches say they don't enjoy seeing him back in that single safety for Mississippi State. Senior out of Clinton, Mississippi. Let's watch the coverage on this kick. Very important that they get down the field because Mississippi State was close the last time on the punt return of breaking it for a touchdown. Good coverage kick this time and to the 11. Great open field tackle by Malone on the special team. 46 on the kick. We'll be right back. Hudson Brown has to be extremely pleased with what his offense has done so far. 13 to nothing. Pitch to Bowie. And he will be close to the first down. Now let me explain something to you. For those who have just joined this ball game, Mississippi State up 13 to nothing. And Mike, they've been drilling away with Davis and Roberts, and all of a sudden, here comes a guy who was the nation's leading rusher in the junior colleges last year. This is the first time we've seen him carry the ball. He's 6'1, 222 pounds, and can run. He's a junior college player that Watson Brown told me he's a little bit slow picking because he got injured and he just hasn't had as many repetitions, so he's just going to use him sparingly tonight. Straight ahead with the dive play on first down, Shane Rink steps up into the hole to make the tackle on Galloway. When you're a junior college player, sometimes you get behind a little bit because everybody else is there in the spring. And he arrived there, but he just got behind with the hamstring pull. And Watson felt like when, when he finally gets to where he gets all the reps he needs in practices, he's going to develop into a real strong running back for Mississippi State. Time of possession now in this opening quarter, over eight minutes for Mississippi State. Texas, only three and a half minutes. And a timeout is called by the Bulldogs, so we'll take it with them. 3.05 left to play in this opening quarter, and the Bulldogs having their own way. 3.05 left in this opening quarter. Fred Ward, number one, a senior out of West Point, Mississippi. Comes out wide to the open side of the field. And Robinson looked as though he wanted to throw the shovel pass, and the area was closed up. Shane Rink is the man who knocks him down. You're right, Ron. They had the shovel draw called, and that's the bad thing about that. What you want to do sometimes when you get the shovel draw called, and it's not open. If you get the opportunity as you drop back, you want to shovel the ball, throw it into the ground. The sleepy Robinson didn't have time. He's looking for the receiver. He should have threw it right now on the ground because then it's an incomplete pass. I don't look for Mississippi State to throw the ball here, even though in their passing situation. Now, they may fool me on this, but third and long, I look for some kind of draw or screen. You're right. Throws the screen pass, and Bowie, in his defense, it was a little bit off the mark. And with Gunn coming up there on him, it might have been best he didn't catch it. Oh, you're right, Ron. They don't want to take a chance. I don't believe the way their defense is playing and the way their field position's been. They don't want to take a chance on third and long. They're not a drop back passing team. Third and long to them is screen, draw, trap, option. Todd Jordan comes in to punt for Mississippi State. Always keep in mind, not on this play because of the fourth down and 12, but he is a 13 quarterback, so it gives Mississippi State another option within. Mike Adams. 
and he is hit before he gets the football. That will be penalty Mississippi State, and the Longhorns will get it in better field position. James is the man who took his head off. <laughs> 47 yards in the kick. I'll tell you what. Mike James, number seven, was like a torpedo. He doesn't know and he doesn't care where the ball's at. He's just going to make the tackle. He's just totally out of position here. You see, watch number seven come in the screen. He doesn't have any clue where that football's at and doesn't care either. He's just going to hit that receiver. Now, I'm not trying to. The foul. The white team, the 15 yard penalty. Mike, you know who his cousins are? And I mean nothing by that. You're going to tell me Jesse and Frank. No, Andre Waters. Oh. <laughs> Andre Mike Waters. James, yeah, that's his, that's his cousin, yeah. <laughs> well, Andre's probably watching somewhere and he said, hey, hey at least he hit him. <laughs> he hit him, all right. <laughs> 209 left in this opening quarter. Gardeer has time, gets it away, and it is caught by Neal at the 31. It's important for Peter Gardeer to have some success. The six foot 190 senior rolls to the left here, under pressure, gets the nice route by Kenny Neal, the senior receiver. He came back to the ball nice, made the catch, was knocked out of bounds. Neal is one of the few players who is from out of state. He is from Memphis, Tennessee. Only four Longhorns are from out of state. Draw play. Roderick Walker showing good balance to the 25 yard line as Juan Long will make the stop from his middle linebacking spot. Ron, you, you think of Peter Gardier, the senior quarterback. He's got a new coach in John McAvick. What has to be going through his mind right now is, hey, I'm a senior. I led this team to the Cotton Bowl two years ago. Last year when we were here, the Auburn game, fans were booing their offense. He wants to get off successfully so he can build some confidence in John McAvick. And he knows they have a young kid named Shea Morenz over there, number 12, that if things don't go well, some, down, some way down the line, maybe he'll get in. But got to get something going offensively. Curtis Jackson, who this time last year was playing high school football at Plano, number 39, took the toss. Juan Long again making the stop. So the first time that we've seen Jackson carry the ball today. And the Horns will be short of the first down by about a half yard. John Makovic on the sideline. You don't see panic. He's been around for a long time. Uh, worked again with Tom Landry, who was always in control on the sidelines. And this is a, a young football game, 52 seconds to go. He just needs this offense to get in that end zone and to get themselves where they feel good about this offensive chemistry. Stack eye, Adrian Walker has the first down to the 20. Harley Gibson, the nose guard, is down at the bottom of that mass of humanity. And Turk McDonald comes off the pile saying, hey, we did this job here. You see the double team by the center and the right guard, the Texas offensive line. It came off the ball nice on that play. That's a stack eye. I believe Lee Corso invented the stack eye one time, or at least ran it at Louisville. That was in football? In uh, foot, I believe it was football. I know Lee has been creative in a lot of ways, in a lot of sports. Sets in the pocket, hit, almost loses the ball, and he will be knocked down by Jerome Brown. Keith Joseph hit him first, and then Brown was also in the area to help knock him down. And with that, the end of the opening quarter here in Austin. So let's take a timeout. At the end of the first 15, Jackie Sherrill's club, 13 to nothing over Texas. We'll be right back. John Makovic talking to his uh, troops on the near sideline as they head back out for a second down, and they need the 11-yard line to pick up the first down. They were outgained 142 to 62 in that opening quarter. Walker on the pitch, turns the corner, and 
finally knocked out of bounds by Juan Long, and he came a long way to get over there and make the hit. I'll tell you who made that play for Mississippi State was Frankie Luster, number four, able to get to the corner and not allow Adrian Walker to get turned up. Well, remember the numbers we mentioned back in the early part of the ball game, Mike? The Texas had not scored. Well, it is now 15 games that they have not scored a first quarter touchdown. And the longer that goes, it becomes a bigger burden. And next week when they go into that game, that's going to be on their offense's mind. That puts a huge burden on your defense, doesn't it? Sure does. Blitz. Pass. He's caught by Neal. Out of bounds at the four. Make it the three. John Makovic stayed in, had good protection. You see the back, stay in here to block. Peter Gardner is going to throw the out route to the corner to Kenny Neal, number six. Mike James was in man coverage, just a little bit too much cushion. Didn't close fast enough. Adrian Walker down here has to be the guy to try to get this football in for him. You're right. He gets it on the little counter, and he will score. Ron, I'll tell you what. That score means a lot. But I'll tell you, it means more to number 10 than anybody on this football field. And there you see John Makovic, the first one to congratulate him because it's important for him to have success as a senior with a new coach in place. Scott ready to attempt the extra point. He's got it. And we have a six-point ball game with 14.42 left until halftime. I like Adrian Walker, number 36. Like him for several reasons. As an eye tailback, he's a good running back that can cut. You're going to see him here as Peter Gardier gives him the handoff. Watch him now break it outside. There was nothing inside, and he has speed enough to get to the corner. He also has good hands on catching the football. John Makovic. It's about as much emotion as you're going to see out of him. He learned from the master, Coach Tom Landry. organization of its kind and they will perform it tonight at halftime along with the regular band. You know statistic Ron you talk about 100 years of football Texas in 90 and uh, the opening games 82 14 and 3. I mean they've been successful in opening games. Eight plays 54 yards 227 five runs and three passes and Adrian Walker out of Tyler Chapel Hill gets the touchdown. John Makovic will remember that touchdown. That's his first one here at the University of Texas, and I'm sure there'll be many more to follow. Roberts and James, the dual safety. This is going to come down to Roberts at the 11. Marker comes down, and he brings it out to the 30-yard line. It's Jackson who was downfield to make the stop in special teams. Eric Jackson, number nine. Thirteen to seven, our score with 14:36 left until halftime. 
penalty was for illegal use of hands. And Sleepy Robinson wants a timeout. Something defensively he did not like. So Mississippi State takes their second timeout of this first half. And we'll take a break. Bulldogs were up 13 to nothing. Horns have closed it to six. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. And welcome to this, our 12th consecutive year of CFA primetime coverage right here on ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Mike, next week we're at Clemson for the first night game ever, Florida State Clemson. The following week, it is Nebraska at Washington. This game, we're going to have a burner here before this one's over. we got a great lineup this All year. All those next week games, next two weeks, they'll need a shoehorn to get them in those stadiums. <laughs> Play action. Robinson puts it on his hip. This is going to be well overthrown. Ward is the man he wanted. And the dual coverage, Lance Gunn and Joey Ellis. Good coverage. Tried to go up on top. Good coverage by Joey Ellis. Texas and a lot of man coverage. So you're going to see a lot of streak routes, a lot of routes where they try to go for home runs against that man coverage. Texas last year, Ron, ranked number one in pass defense, third in the country in total defense, and their record was five and six. Now, you talk about sports. You said you can play good defense. In football, run the football, you can win. And so that's how bad their offense was last year. Pitch goes to Roberts. Has five, has 10, cut it off at 15, and he's out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Vasek saved a possible six. Boy, he can scoop. Watch number 44, the linebacker, as he shuffles, and he's going to be blocked. Sleepy Robinson on the down-the-line option. Watch the block by Michael Davis, 37. And was able to spring that play for a good gain. get outside and finally knocked out of bounds across midfield. Roberts is a 4-3 sprinter. And he just gets to the corner so quick and the blocking by the wide receivers made that play. Adrian Karsten, let's go to him. Ron and Coach, one of the reasons the Bulldogs are picking up so much uh, ground, or yardage on the ground rather, the basic fundamental that the defensive line is not following. Follow the helmet of the offensive lineman. He will always take you to the ball. That's one of the reasons the Bulldogs are gaining so much ground. It doesn't hurt when Kenny Roberts runs that 4-3 either to get to that corner. You know, most importantly, not just a 4-3, Mike, he's 10-4 in the 100 meters. Ball is fumbled. Mississippi State, I believe, has made the recovery. Dominic Bustamante, the redshirt freshman out of Corpus Christi, one of those down at the bottom of the stack. Now, was go ahead. I'm sorry, Ron. I'm just going to say Dominic is one of the examples of a, of a young kid who's having to play a lot, more so than Leon Fuller would like to see. But because of the injury, they're having to bring him along. They have no alternative. And they'll develop as they go down the season. Uh, you see the youth of this uh, defensive front. They'll get better with each game. Davis, and he will take check it. That's uh, Kevin Bowie. Rapp will make the stop, but he's across midfield, close to the 46. Anytime you see Mississippi State in a second and 10 or third and long yardage, they're going to run the football because they're not a drop back passing team. They're better running the football in those long yardage situations. Now they're in a medium range, so you may get a play action. You see Jackie Sherrill Watson Brown. Leon Fuller on the other side, so that if now they try to strategy, I think now you try to get Sleepy Robinson rolling out. Get him on the corner. Slips it out in the flat to Davis, and he will not have the first down. On the third and six, Kevin Watler got outside to make the hit on him, and it appears Mississippi State's going to be shy by five. Nice little slip screen. 
Sleepy Robinson sets up to set the screen up to the right. There's the dump to Michael Davis. But Kevin Watler played off the block and was able to get inside the offensive lineman and make the tackle. Now, I told you that Jordan is a third-team quarterback. He lined up under center, and Texas has burned a timeout because they thought that possibly Mississippi State was going to run, and they had the kick return team on the field. So we'll take a break. 13 to 7. The Bulldogs still on the lead. University Swimmers and Divers of the University of Texas. 11:29 left until halftime. Jordan actually caused Texas to burn the timeout. And I think all Mississippi State was trying to do was get him to jump offside to pick up that uh, four yards. The punt goes over the head of Willamette Garza. Touched at the one, but uh, it's going to go into the end zone. It'll come back out to the 20. Our Toyota Leadership Award winners this week are from Mississippi State, Mark Woodard. He's a graduate student in State's MBA program. He carries a three-point average, and he's been involved as a tutor for international students on the Starkville campus. And for the University of Texas, Willie Matt Garza, he has a 2.9 average in social work. He spends 20 hours per week working with children at local elementary schools. Toyota, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Well, Willie Matt Garza just made a heads-up play because because he was a deep safety and he ran to the left like the ball was coming in that direction and that enabled it to get in the end zone so that Texas could have it on the 20-yard line. Longhorns finally put it in the end zone in their last possession. To see if they can get some continuity here. Gardeer into the flat has it complete to his running back Walker. Gain of about three on the play. Phil Brown, I beg your pardon, a junior from Commerce rather than Adrian Walker. Wesley Lisi on the stop. John Makovic's Illinois teams the last four seasons averaged 35 pass attempts a game. Now, that's not a lot of passes to get a reputation as a throwing offense, but it is a throwing offense with great balance to set up the run. Roderick Walker fights off one tackler out in the vicinity of the 29. That's Arlie Gibson on the bottom of the pile, along with Jerome Brown. You have to credit the Texas offensive line. In the last two series, they've taken a little bit more control of the line of scrimmage. This is a line that Pat Watson, the offensive line coach, feels like is going to develop. They've got a group of young linemen and older linemen there. And guess where Pat played? He was an All-American at Mississippi State. Very good football player over there. You know this game means a lot to him. This is, a, this is a time you want to look for your tight end, Jason Burleson. Two tight ends set, but you can see him pull the guards. Walker is going to have the first down. Brockemeyer with a good block as well, number 78. Remember, we talked about the youngster, a redshirt freshman out of Fort Worth, only 19 years of age, and Mikey's playing against a 26-year-old. Went to a one-back set, Ron, and you're going to see the guard pull here. It's the old counter play. Guard and tackle with a one-back set to show pass, and then Adrian Walker's able to get the yardage for the first down. That time, Brockemeyer not blocking against Brown, but as Mike said, on the pole and doing a good job. Keevan Henry came across, and whether one of the Texas linemen was moving his backside, I'm not sure, but it looked as though, oh, we'll see. You can see John Nackvig not happy. He doesn't want these penalties. He knows he can't win this game with a lot of penalties against a good team like Mississippi State. No flag. And you Defense know what? Defense moved in, threatened the offense. Calls him to move. No play. Gets a nice little break there. Starts first and no 10. Play. No play. Watch number 65, the left guard. It's Alan Luther. Quarterback really pulled out and, and drew it. He might have got away with one there. <laughs> Pete Gardier now 5 of 8 for 60 yards. Incomplete. And boy, that went right through the hands of Jackson. <laughs> 13 to 7 if you have just walked in your living room and joined us. Nine minutes and 21 seconds left until halftime. 
And to elongate a little bit on what Mike was talking about a moment ago, Texas opened this ball game with back to back illegal procedure penalties and then got another penalty for delay of ball game. So they were just out of sync, but they have stayed away from the penalties and have been more effective. Curtis Jackson. Boy, he got through four players and then he pays for it at the 35 is Daniel Boyd. The senior from South Haven, Mississippi, comes out to make the stop. Number 98, Jerome Brown. Mississippi State runs so well on defense that you, it looks like you've got a pretty good hole. They put Burleson in motion. Watch the close of the defensive lineman. Jerome Brown, number 98. Latif Travis, number 49. They run well, so when the ball when the ball's strung out like that, they'll make the play at the line of scrimmage and keep the game in the minimum. Frankie Luster and that ball was tipped but he still he threw it into a crowd of people he just got over zealous on the throw bad mistake four, third Frankie and long Luster. and he just and you're right he threw into a crowd and Frankie Luster number four was there for the interception off of the shotgun receives a snap drops back good depth there's the throw look at all the defenders four defenders in the area Frankie Luster plays the Tip. Now here, here's where Mississippi State now becomes dangerous because when you get a mistake and you're at the 50 yard line, you really like to come out and try to go for a bomb. Good point because early in the game they had great field position. Then the last couple of series they have not. To take the ball across the 50 is very big to any offensive coordinator. Well, you can see the right guard, Shea Bell, junior out of West Point. Coming out of his stance just a little bit early. Now, Sleepy Robinson is checking off the line of scrimmage, and that is why the delay of games, the delay of game uh, appears. The illegal procedure against the offense. That illegal procedure. This time. That was Bell. Uh, as I mentioned, the right guard. It was just a little bit early. And they're having just a little bit of a problem with the lateness that they're making the play call. Watch the right guard. He moves. They're real close to a delay of game. To Texas, you like this to put them in first and 15. Robinson, no place to run. Kevin Wattler, one of the first men there, along with Brian Vosick. Looks like this Sleepy Robinson's having a problem getting the play called to his receivers. It was real late again to the receivers, and you can see the receivers make the hand motion and keep passing it on to the other receivers outside of them. But they're having a communication problem with this crowd. Wattler comes out. Van Malone comes in as Texas goes nickel. Game. No tight end in the game. You'll always see the nickel. Pass. He's caught by Harris. Oh, was he alone? He caught the seam at the 40, and that will be enough for the first down. Willie Harris on a deep curl route, number 87. There you see the curl. You see the underneath route is what brought the linebacker coverage away and opened it up. Number 21, Grady Kavanis makes the tackle. It's a big first down for Mississippi State. Oh, second down and 20. Believe me, Roberts. You see him change speeds. Tubbs finally will get on top of him, but it was Joey Ellis who took his feet out from under him. And Mike, with seven minutes and 15 seconds left to play until halftime, Longhorns need to keep the Bulldogs out of the end zone. Uh, no more than a field goal here. The way this offense can just explode. Well, you're right, Ron. Take Galloway, the fullback, number 21. They're doing such a good job blocking the linebackers, and that's what's opening that up to gain six yards on first down. The option, the fullback, is making that play. Galloway 
Bryant will take it inside the 30, around the 29. Shane Rink, redshirt freshman out of Houston, is there to make the stop. Shane Rink. And number 47, Kevin Butler, combining for the stop. Jackie Sherrill may think in terms of two downs here to make this first down. Watson Brown, Jackie Sherrill both communicating on the headset with, up, with the people upstairs. Third down, Mike, and they need the 26. Seam look to the sideline, get the play. Now he has to give it to his offensive unit. Pitch to Roberts. He's going to be about a half yard shot. Winfred Tubbs tripped him up. I tell you who made that play, Rob. Willie Mac Garza, number 17. The free safety's got the pitch man on the option. And he just comes roaring up the field and made that tackle. When you have a safety and you have a linebacker and the option comes down the line of scrimmage and the pitch, these two people have to get up the football field. Watch number 17. Watch how fast he's up on the pitch. He's there before he can make the turn in the corner. Gardner to attempt the field goal. This is a 44-yard attempt. Got a little breeze behind him, plenty of distance, and he is good. Gardner, 9 of 14 last year, and he drills this one with plenty to spare from 44. So let's take a break. 5-16 left until halftime. And our new score, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State, 16 at Texas 7. We'll be right back. A few clouds lingering over Memorial Stadium. A 20% chance of rain as the upper deck is filled. 16 to 7, Mississippi State leading in this one with 516 left until halftime. That 44-yarder, by the way, by Chris Gardner is the second longest in his career. Football is a game of field position, Ron, and that turnover by Peter Gardner, the interception, and the field position change, Mississippi State being able to take advantage of that turnover and put points on the board. Big. You remember I told you in the pregame when he was kicking with the wind, which he just did, he kicked every ball out of the end zone, and that is wonderful for special teams coaches, isn't it? Oh. Adrian Karsten, let's uh, get a re report from you. What have you got going? Well, Ron, Coach Godfrey mentions field position, but ball control is very important as well. Usually script an offensive game plan anticipating 20 plays per quarter total of 80. Last year, Mississippi State averaged 59 total per game. They're already at 32 plays, so they're well ahead of their average. You control the ball, control the game. Thanks, Adrian. In fact, in the for first quarter, they controlled. We, we talked about time of possession then. It was way an imbalance, 9-14 to 5-46 uh, for, for uh, Mississippi State. Then Texas early on in the second quarter dominated time of possession. Then the turnover by Texas, and it cost them. Well, you talk about 59 plays a game last year. If they had the average, that was making the most of those plays. You'd like to be in the 80-plus area. Gardeer to Burleson, the tight end. And he will take it out to the 31 yard line. Pressure from the outside on Gardier. He never saw him running for his life at Keevan Henry. Will necktie him. That was Joseph, though, who was coming from the outside to put the pressure on him. Watch the pursuit here. Number 93, Keith Joseph, coming from the backside, is going to put the heat on Peter Gardier. Looks like he's got to run all the way here. 91, Henry makes the tackle. Keevan Henry. Keith Joseph out of Pascagoula down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. About to go under four minutes until halftime. Play action as they set screen into the boundary, and boy, it does not work. Adrian Walker, as soon as he got the football, he really took some punishment over there from that linebacking core for Mississippi State. Also, Kevin Knight, the free safety, was up quickly. Linebacker Juan Long, number 40. Just 
read that screen from the start of the play. Didn't take the fake on the draw. Ran to the screen right away, and really it was the person who made that play. It is caught, and that is the freshman Laval Pinkney. Caught one in the first quarter, now has one here in the second quarter. He's going to be, it looks like, a half yard short. I don't know if they're going to measure it or not. Peter Gard there with a nice route to Lavelle Pinky, the young receiver, number 80. Not a lot on that ball, but enough to get to Pinkney to make that catch. Kelvin Knight just put a little hit on the young freshman also after he made that catch. Let's see how close they are, Ron. I think he's a half. About a half a football well, short. Well, we'll check out. It's we'll early see in the if season. I can yeah. See. yeah, it looks like it. And maybe even a little more than half. Yep. Folks in the stands are going to say go for it. But uh, they don't have a contract that says. Well, I'll tell you what, when you're in the first year, this is the time. If you're ever going to go for it, go in your first year when you just <laughs> signed a new contract. <laughs> I they like that, guys. They can't throw you out this quick. Just go for it. Hey, they love it. Listen to this. They love you, John. They love you. I'll tell you one thing. He's sweating bullets right now on that sideline, though, because he knows he's got to get this first down. Fourth down. Quarterback. Walker. Took the ball deep to Adrian Walker, the tailback. Nice blocking by Troy Reimer and Alan Luther. Also, Turk McDonald, number 55, the senior out of DeSoto, Texas. Now let's see what they do with it, though. Now they got the first down, 327 on the clock. And turn it into points. Burleson. And the tight end will be shy of midfield, just across the 48. We mentioned Burleson came to Texas as a quarterback, a really great athlete, Mike. He won a national uh, competition as a decathlete, great in track. And uh, it was a situation where the youngster kind of looked for a specialty, though, in football. Wound up as a tight end, and the coach is very pleased with the way he's played. Ron takes a special guy to go for quarterback to tight end. Beef himself up. You have to block up there. It's a little tougher position, but he's made the adjustment. Adams on the reverse. Has the first down, and he is to the 41 yard line. Going to be a gain of 11. And a Texas first down, and the clock shows two minutes and 31 seconds until the halftime. Mississippi State defensively is a heavy zone team, which means they're not going to take a lot of chances on defense, so they're not going to get themselves in a, a predicament where they're in a lot of man-to-man -man coverage where you're going to get a lot of big, long passes against them. They're going to make you work the field for your score, and that's what they're doing to Texas right now, making them work the field. Keep throwing the curl. Keep throwing the deep curl route. Kenny Neal's gonna run a curl, and there's gonna be a flat and up route. Peter Gardier in a drop back action. Watch the curl, the deep curl route. Here comes Kenny Neal. Flat route takes the linebacker out underneath it. Good throw by Peter Gardier. Five completions in a row for Gardier make it six that pass will only go for about three yards but Mike James came up very quickly to make the stop on Neal. Just a little quick out to came with back to hit a curl for about 15 yards came back with a quick out to Kenny Neal number six. Tenth play of this drive for the Texas Longhorns they trail 16 to 7 with 128 left until intermission. 
Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett Report, number one Miami and Iowa, and also Marshall Fox Big Day, the missile in action as well. That and a lot more at a halftime. Roderick Walker, little inside counter. Boy, the trap didn't work. He never got there, did he, Mike? No, he did. Mississippi State closed it up inside, making the third down play crucial now for Texas. They're going to take a timeout. 61 seconds showing on the clock until halftime, and we're going to hold it right here. Longhorn Band prepares to uh, entertain at halftime, but right now they'd be far more entertained if their charges on the field could put one in the end zone. I think it's very important for Texas now the, the, to get pick this first down up with 101 on the clock. And now you, if you're Mississippi State, you want to make sure you know where number 13 is, Jason Burleson, and Adrian Walker, number 36. Those are the two receivers you want to make sure you control. Adrian Karsten, you have something for us. Ron just overheard Coach Makovic in their huddle, and I quote, if you guys score here, we will win this game. Dardere for the end zone. McLemore caught it out of the end zone. Lamore going for the football did not realize where he was and a more experienced receiver would have stopped and had that defensive back run up his back when he, he got the interference call. You're right. He was bumped as he went down the field. Kevin Knight on coverage number five. Watch McLemore the outside receiver. Just run out of room. If he pulls up you're right Ron. He may draw the interference. More important they've got to come away with three. Scott an attempt of 37 yards, kicking into a slight breeze. Got the distance, and he got it. 50 seconds left on the scoreboard clock until halftime, but it's 16 to 10. some of the near capacity crowd here at Memorial Stadium in Austin Texas we started off this night it was 94 degrees and the heat index was 101 it has it's dropped I guess into the upper 80s but it sure feels a heck of a lot better than we first started and the players were suffering they were having to do a lot of substituting yeah, I know I'm warm so I can imagine what they feel like down there Fred Ward and number 25, Tony James, back at a dual safety for Mississippi State as Shreddy prepares to kick it off. James is a home run kind of player, and I, if, if I'm in Texas, I'm not sure I get it in his direction. Well, if they get distance back, they get a good return, then I think Watson Brown may try to go deep, but if they don't get any kind of field position, I think they'll just kill the clock with the running game. And he will be shy of the 20 yard line. That's Frazier on the special teams who was down there to make the hit. So the squib kick worked out just the way Texas apparently planned it. Well, I'll be surprised if Mississippi State throws the football. I think what Mac Brown and Jack and Cheryl want to do now, backed up like this, they don't want a mistake. So I'll be surprised. And it looks, it looks like Sleepy's limping you know, a little that's, bit. That's what I was going to ask you. It looked like he had just a little hitch in his giddy up there. Oh, they say he's a tough competitor. Watson Brown told me he's one of the toughest. He got his nickname when he was five years old. His eyes were real puffy. <laughs> and his brothers and sisters' right. family said they started calling him Sleepy. Winfred Tubbs will be there to make the stop, and Mike, you had it pegged as far as what they would do. Tried to break it with Roberts, who is capable of breaking that really long one. But as the clock runs now down to under 30 seconds, they really don't have to run another play if they don't want it. I think when the whistle uh, went off, it was 24 seconds, so they could just stay in the huddle and not run a play. Have to take a lot of things into consideration for those hoping that they'd throw the ball up. Remember the new fumble rule. You can pick it up and return it either side of the ball this year. All kind of things to remember. Tub 
Rodgers will hit Roberts and will stop him short of the 30 yard line and that is the final play of the first half. So coming up at halftime is the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Mississippi State 16 to 10 we will be right back. Sixteen to ten at halftime. Mississippi State leading the Texas Longhorns. And Mike in the first quarter, thirteen to nothing. Mississippi State jumped out on top. And it looked for the world as though the Bulldogs are going to name any score they wanted to tonight. But things have turned a bit. Well, they have, Ron. And Texas is back in this football game, except for one turnover, the interception of the Peter Gardere pass. This game's been an even football game. Let's take a look at the stats in the first half, Mike. For Mississippi State as they established the running game early in the first quarter. They've had 26 rushing attempts for 129 yards. They need to go back and initiate the runoff tackle, set up the option, and then the play action pass. Texas did a nice job with their passing game in the second quarter. It shows the confidence they have on fourth down and one to go for the first down with the Texas offense. So should be an interesting second half. All right, Mike, so penalties and also the turnovers. Uh, that's a very good point, and of course, you could talk about that every week of the college or professional football season. Therein lies the difference in most every game that, uh, that you're involved in. 16 to 10 right now with uh, two more quarters left to play here in Austin. We did not get a report at halftime on Sleepy Robinson as far as any injury to his leg, but I'll be anxious to see when the Mississippi State does go on offense for the first time if he is having a little bit of a problem with uh, with the leg or a groin. Well, I think if he's having a problem, they'll pull him out because they need to run the option in the second half. They need to go back and establish the inside running game and the option because I don't really believe Texas stopped the inside running game or the option. You answered my next question as far as the adjustments that were made. Actually, Mississippi State, it was kind of like a smorgasbord there for a while. They, they were trying a little bit of every flavor, weren't they? Well, some penalties stopped him and put him in a bad position. And then you go over to Texas. I think the fourth down call by John Makovic really ignited this crowd. And as I said before, if you're going to make that call as a coach where he did that, he in the first year of the five-year contract. <laughs> now, when he's in a fifth year of the contract, he's not going to make that call. But it was a good one tonight. Hunting time it would have been. Brady Kavnis, one kick return in the opening half. That for 14 yards. And on the far sideline, we have just been told that Greg Plump, the junior out of Hattiesburg, is in fact warming up. So what we will do is we will get Adrian Carson. In fact, we see him. He's headed in that direction. We'll try to get a report on Sleepy. Cavus five yards deep, and Texas will take it over at the 20-yard line. Well, Ron, that answered my question because if Sleepy Robinson can't run the option, you've got to go with Greg Plump, the number two quarterback. So Texas comes on offense for the first time in the second half, having deferred that opening kickoff. Time of possession, Mike, 1638 Mississippi State, 1322 for Texas. And so that means that in that second quarter, Texas really drew it even because it was 914 to 546 after the first 15 minutes. Throw that out, throw that out the one turnover in this ball game, and this game is dead even. Straight ahead with the running play. There is not much there. As Phil Brown takes it for one, maybe a couple. Defensively, Juan Long. We called his name a lot tonight. Now, Daniel Boyd it gets a lot of publicity, but Long has been the man, the junior out of Tupelo, who has uh, really been in a, on a lot of stops from tackle to tackle. Brown, the lone setback for the Longhorns. See the blitz coming. Over the middle, Burleson. And his tight end will have it to the 25, but it's Long and Boyd who sandwich on the stop. Boyd, one of the really good stories in college football. He is uh, already accepted into dental school. Microbiology, his major. 
Six feet, 233 pounds, out of South Haven, which is just outside of Memphis, but it is in Mississippi. If this offense is to have success, this is where they've got to be at their best. Third and five. Now, this usually becomes a pass situation to the running back or the remaining tight end, but they've removed the tight end from the game, so watch both running backs. Movement, and you can see a couple of offensive linemen look as though they got out of the stance a little early. Also, you can see 98 Jerome Brown coming over saying something to Brockemeyer. Brown is the, the elder statesman. Got you a think? dead ball. First false start <laughs> on the offense. Be first down. A first start. Yeah. A route we might watch right now. They had success in the first half in third downs of throwing the deep curl route. So let's see if they don't try to get the ball to. Number 80, Lavelle Pinkney on about the 12, 15 yard curl route to try to pick up the first down. But third and 10 rather than third and five for the Horns. McLemore is the guy now who would, who could possibly be the curl guy. McLemore or Lavelle Pinkney. Gardner and the ball is tipped and knocked down. He had a man open. But I believe Ed oh. Williams is the guy who the guy who got a hand on it out of Bentonia, Mississippi. Locking that pass down. Texas one of seven on third down conversions this evening. I say you in, in this offense because of the underneath passing game, you got to keep the chains moving. They go back to the first time Texas punted. Mississippi State came very close to breaking a punt return. They need to really cover this one. Tony James, we mentioned in the first half how dangerous he is. He's the man who is back, and McClanahan really gets off a good one into the win. Fair catch is signaled and made at the 36. And let's go down to Adrian. Do you have an injury report on Sleepy for us? That's a big wrapped deep thigh bruise to the left th uh, thigh, rather, run of Sleepy Robinson. They are going to hold him out indefinitely here in the second half. Well, we'll see what kind of confidence they have in Greg Plump, but I, I, I would look for him to establish the running game inside, let him hand off and not make him go right to throw in the football. But they're in a passing formation. Well, we saw him limping at the end of the first half as what you might expect a mix up in cadence count with a new quarterback in. But we saw Sleepy limping. That's the reason why. They iced it. We, um, we're not going to see him again tonight, I wouldn't imagine. Well, I think what happened there, Lee Ford, the center, felt that the Texas players jumped across and he snapped the ball right away to Greg Plump, which a lot of offensive coaches teach their center. And they caught Texas offside. Sure so did. good move by Lee Ford, the center. Anytime he, even though the cadence isn't called, we'll say it's on the second hut. With offsides, contact by the defense, the five yard penalty. That offside ruling moves about a scrimmage to the. Austin, Texas, CFA primetime football. Texas and Mississippi State. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, and Adrian Karsten. Good to have you along here at early going of this third quarter. Keeper fumbles the ball and Texas has recovered at the 36 yard line. Bo Robinson caused the fumble and also made the recovery. I thought they would start with something to just get him in the ball game and they started with a waggle. Bo Robinson, number 45, was up the field too quick and Greg Plump couldn't react to it and he had the ball too far away from his body. Look as he comes outside, the ball's away from his body. Number 45, Bo Robinson just punches his out, punches it out, recovers the fumble, and a big turnover for the Texas offense. Now, well, Bo is the only guy on the defensive front that has any playing experience at all, and you could see his reaction. He made the tackle, caused the fumble, and then made the recovery. Blitz coming, guard there, no place to go. He'll be sacked by Woodard, the senior from Kosciuszko. There's, when there's a momentum change like the fumble, and you're the defensive coordinator on first down, you better come after him. 
Mark Woodard and Herman Carroll, number 96, put the pressure on Peter Gardier. Never had a chance to get that pass off. You could see Adrian Walker to the outside was going to help on the, the man on the outside. And all of a sudden, here came Woodard. You could see that, whoops. Now, this is a screen down or a short pass down. Just get enough back so you can get into a third and ten. Walker into the boundary. And again, it's Woodard, number 45. And a few uh, of the Boo Birds come out with that call, a, a running play back into the boundary. How soon we forget, huh? <laughs> But, you know, when you look at this Mississippi State team, 50 of their 95 scholarship players are juniors or seniors. This is a veteran football team. Rocky Felker, who coached this football team and who was fired and replaced by Jackie Sherrill, recruited some pretty good players in here. And they're mostly his recruits. So uh, this is a veteran team and knows how to react in, their, in adversity on a, a road game. Shotgun. Gardner steps up, throws it, intercepted, and that will be six by Keith Jackson if he can't be caught by the quarterback. And Gardner will drop him at the one. Keith Joseph. Third down and long situation, and he chose to throw a little five-yard route. He was just picked off. Keith Joseph rolled up into too deep coverage. So bad choice on the throw. You see the roll-up corner here. 93, Keith Joseph, rather the line, outside linebacker, was playing off. He rolled up, picked off the ball, and Peter Gardier with a key tag. If they can hold him here on defense, you'll look back to Peter Gardier's effort there to stop the touchdown. Plump lost his footing. He'll go down about a yard and a half away. Winford Tubbs was in the vicinity to make the hit. Third down and long yardage, what you'd like if you're going to throw the football. Of course, pump it down the field a little bit when you're third and more than 15 yards. And uh, just another mistake that uh, really hurts this offense. But the defense now of Texas really has to respond. And uh, they tried an option play on first down. Maybe second down and just try to knock him off the ball with a big fullback. Second and goal. Clock will score. Well, this guy right here is the one who set it up. Number 93, Keith Joseph, a senior out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. Made the interception, returned at 48 yards. Plump on the second play, takes it in for the score, and it's 22 to 10, Mississippi State. They're going to go for two because they're only 12 ahead. They'll go for the two points to try to get it back to 14. Really a key block by Michael Davis, the big fullback on that option. The fake on the dive, and then he, Craig Plump just followed him in the end zone. Plump's throw is knocked down. Brady Cabness with the play. So the two point conversion fails. And let's take one more look at the touchdown, Mike. Right? Craig Plump, the quarterback, will fake to Michael Davis on the left. Watch him just follow him on in the end zone. Michael Davis just took out the inside linebacker of Texas. 10.39 left in this third quarter. Mississippi State by 12. 22 to 12 with 10.39 left in the third quarter. And so turnovers, well, it costs Texas now a total of 10 points. Mississippi State has responded following turnovers, and Pete Gardier gets to bring that offensive unit right back out. But with the burden on his mind right now of uh, just having tossed the interception, which led to the touchdown. A yard deep. He'll return. Let's take a look at the last touchdown. When a team runs the option, 
They're so difficult to defend on the goal line. Here you're going to see Mississippi State, Greg Plump, come out, fake the ball to Michael Davis, the fullback. Watch him block on the linebacker, number 40, Robert Reed. Bill Sart and the guard leading on the corner, and you've got six points on an option touchdown. Gerald Crawford, a junior from Sherman, the lone setback for Texas this time. Miles will be there to tackle Gardere after a gain of about four out around the 22. And some mixed reactions to uh, Gardere when he came back on the field. The youngster has has had to take on a lot here at Texas Mike his third system in four years which is extremely tough but it's what have you done for me lately well, that's true he's had different coaches he's he, different systems and uh, now they're out of sync a little bit on offense an interception seems like it has bothered this offense as they came back on the field Walker with the first down carry over right tackle. Latif Travis, a junior out of Pensacola, was out there to make that defensive tackle. Mike, here's an impressive number of what Jackie Sherrill's club did last year in the third quarter. 72 to 16 in the third quarter. And it says a lot about adjustments made at halftime. You, you can look at that and just show the dominance that they've controlled in the third quarter. They started this quarter the same way. Hang on, Pinkney. You know, Pinkney is 6'5", 222, but he runs under a 4'5". And the cornerback came up and tried to make the steal, and Pinkney is quick enough, although he's big, to take it the distance. The fans like to hang on to hope, and youth is really hope that you enjoy in a football program. LaBelle Pinkney is a big, tall receiver, 6'5". You see the nice route, and he takes off. And again, that's encouraging for the fans in a, in a new system that the young kid can come in and play first college game and so effectively. Counter Trey with Adrian Walker. He'll take it to the 45. Our score 22 to 10 with Mississippi State on top as we go under nine minutes in this third quarter. There, there. Misses him. Boy, Adrian Walker had just come free over the middle. Pete knows it. <laughs> Love to have it back. By the way, one other comment about, well, let's take a look at the replay. I'll tell you this story in a moment. Peter Gardier really never got set here. He was, his feet, he just couldn't get set up. He couldn't find who he was looking for and just throws the ball a little bit too far. Hey, that would have been a big game or two. There's no one over there on the crossing route. Seven. Mike, if I'm the secondary coach at Mississippi State, that's two gambles they didn't have to take. They've got the big lead. Well, Edward Williams is gambling on the interception. No, he's just trying to knock the ball away. He just didn't make the play. Kenny Neal, I thought he was going for the interception, but he wasn't. He was just late breaking on the play. Peter Gardier gets it in there, and Kenny Neal picks up valuable real estate after the catch. Well, this one didn't get off on the right rhythm, and Jackson's going to be knocked down for no gain. Ed Williams there to make the stop, and you could see Diamond. people Diamond. looked as though they were heading in the wrong direction, Mike. Well, that just blew up from the start. You hear John Makovic yelling, Diamond, every offense, because he'll run three receivers or four receivers or two tight ends in the game. Every set has a call to it. So the diamond is this particular group that goes in. So that's why it's a little easier to get that group on the field so you don't get the delay of penalty call. You also heard him 
they will holler a single number sometimes. What is that, the number of receivers for the outside? He's the key guy. I, I didn't hear it, so I really am not sure what that means. On second and goal, Blitz is on. Puts it up in the corner, and touchdown, Jackson. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage. When you're coaching, you always hold your breath there. You want to see the first guy to jump so you know that it's so that it's on you or the opposing team. John Makovic now gets the bad news. Standard. Standard. Get it. Come here. Come here. Come here. So Eric Jackson just had his first touchdown erased. We had illegal procedure on the offensive team. They did not have an opening in on the line of scrimmage. That will be replayed. Mike, count him up on the uh, telestrator here. You can show us the penalty. Well, let's see how many they do have on the line of scrimmage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, unless they're not counting either one of these two receivers on line of scrimmage, he's off. So, unless they're counting both receivers to the left off, there's only six men on the line of scrimmage. Blitz coming up the middle again. Pass is caught by Neal, and he's down at the two. Knight and Williams defensively. Nice recovery by Peter Gardere in the offense. The penalty, uh, they reacted to it. Come back with a quick slant. Now you're in a runner pass situation on about the two yard line. The person that's been helping the most down here is Adrian Walker, 36. Burleson wide open, and the ball is tipped. Mark Woodard got a hand on it as Burleson had beaten the coverage, and then Burleson had to make a tackle. He could play that kind of defense after the ball was tipped. They went to a stack eye. Watch the fake. Peter Gardier, the Adrian Walker. Now there's the block by number 13, Jason Burleson. Ball was thrown too flat, Ron. He had to get some air under it. He had to get some height for the ball. He didn't it. do it. That's exactly he threw right. Threw it too flat, and that allowed the defensive man to knock it down. Well, the linebackers for Mississippi State have really had some big plays. Fourth down and goal. The crowd will tell you. Not gonna have it. Roderick Walker trying to come back into the boundary side of the field, and Mississippi State will hold. It's Daniel Boyd who came over to make the hit. See John Makovic, what he's telling Lance Gunn right now is, hey, we took our shot there, but now we're expecting you to keep him down there, and I want that ball right back. And you see he's not real happy with Peter Gardier. Seven oh three left in this third quarter. Adrian Karsten down on the sidelines. What do you have, Adrian? Now that earful, Ron, that Peter Gardera is getting from Coach Makovic is because that was not the play that Coach Makovic called. I believe the call is to the wide side of the field rather than to run into the boundary. And you saw the result. It was rather strange looking, have to admit. Ran into the short side. Yeah. Adrian's right. I'm sure they probably would have preferred a little bit more room to run to the corner. Here's where the defense really has to step in and come after Mississippi State. Tubbs will step up to make the hit, and the dangerous thing right here, you could see Plump, who doesn't get the reps on the practice field, bump into his uh, running back. The Bearcats. Galloway in the grasp of James Lane. Now it's going to be third down. The positive thing for Mississippi State, even if they don't pick up the first down here, Mike, they still have the wind behind them, and the wind has increased. So they stand to get a very good punt out of this if they don't pick up the first down. Well, it's a good point. I just keep thinking now, Leon Fuller, I doubt that they would run an option with Craig Plump unless he keeps the ball on this. Now, I don't know if they'd want him pitching the ball here or running the ball inside. I doubt if they throw the football. I just completely don't think they're going to throw the football. Tailback. 
fullback or the quarterback and running on the option without the pitch. Well, he even pitched it back, and Curl will come up and annihilate that play from the get-go. Dominic Bustamante also at the bottom of the pile. Now you got two choices as the special teams coach. You can decide it's Gary Darnell, the former assistant in Notre Dame. One, to try to pressure the punt, try to block the punt or force a shank, or two, to set up field position by trying to get some type of return. It looks to me like they're going to try a return because they figure, just like you said, he'll get some, he'll get a pretty good kickoff. The longer the kick, the better chance to return. There's Gary Darnell, special teams coach. And Mike Adams, the young fellow we were looking at a moment ago, he was, this time last year was playing high school football at Arlington, Texas. And from what the Texas staff says about him, and we talked to at length tonight about Lavelle Pinckney, I'll tell you, number 83 can also excite you. But I, I think for the youngster, one thing he probably ought to do, Mike, and that is take an extra five or ten yards because this win is considerable. Jordan can kick the ball well and nothing else like an outfielder. It's easier to run up under the ball than it is to go back over your shoulder and retreat. I'm going to tell you something. We're, we may make you a special teams coach. Let me tell you why. You're right. You look at him right now. He's 50 yards deep right now. And, and his coach, Gary Gar Darnell, probably charted the kicker in practice and knew that he was kicking 50, 55 yards with the win. So he just by moving the receiver back and now with the chance of the return. Now he's going to get a good long kick, gets a chance to get that football and make something happen. Mike Adams, number 83, becomes the man of the moment. Kenny Roberts being helped off the field. Now he's going under his own power. And it looked as though it was a leg cramp. So for Mississippi State faithful, uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, I think it was just the lack of fluid that was bothering him. Let me get a combination here. Uh, half side, one side rushing, the other side returning. Look how deep he is. Boy, he has respect for this. 40, 45, 50 yards. Jordan waiting. Got the return on all the way. And it's a low line drive kick. He'll field it at the 49. Look at this guy run. To the 29-yard line, and Gumina is the man who saved something that could have been bigger. Timeout. 5.08 left in the third quarter. Mississippi State by 12. Time is back in. Is Gardeer possibly with an audible? I think this is the biggest ser series of his college career. He turned it into a quarterback draw. I got turned around, and he'll have three yards. Mississippi State is doing now, in looking at the video from last year's game of what they did last year, and that is bringing a lot more pressure from uh, from the angles on uh, Gardeer. Well, the pressure's coming from the outside, both outside backers with pressure. But as I said before, this is the biggest series number 10 Peter Gardeer is ever going to have because he needs to show some results here. If he does it. You know, I'm not sure with this field position they've had that you don't start looking for the young guy here pretty soon. Adrian Walker, Rockemeyer in front, breaks it for five, ten, and finally tripped up at the 15-yard line. Rockemeyer was the guy again who was pulling and blocking. Number 78, Blake Brockemeyer with a good pull on the tailback counter play. Adrian Walker pit, picking up the big yardage. Watch the counter and you're, you're a good quarterback when the other people play around you too. You need everybody. It just can't fall on one shoulder. There's the, the run by Adrian Walker who's been very successful running the football tonight. Pitch to Walker, tries to turn the corner, and that's where that great speed, Frankie Luster, comes over to knock him out of bounds. <laughs> They're looking for Ty Detmer about now. <laughs> Do you ever do that, Mike? Do you call for a guy that had graduated? Yeah, many do times. Wishful thinking? <laughs> From other schools, even. <laughs> Second and nine. Hit, and how in the world he held on to the football, I don't know. 
all of a sudden covered in white. You can see Jerome Brown, one of the first men there. Number 98. And also Latif Travis was in the area. Well, it looked like they brought the inside linebacker too, Juan Long, number 40, to try to pressure him. Watch the pocket just uh, fall apart here as Peter Gardere goes back to set up a five step drop. There's number 40, Juan Long got in his face and there wasn't any place for him to throw. Now, here's where you have to throw the ball down the field. You got to take a shot at the end zone on third down. It's third and 16. The line to make is the five. And Texas goes with a draw play. Roderick Walker. Well, John Makovic's thinking was simple. If, if we're all and every fan in here is talking about going on top, maybe I can bust a trap up inside to trap draw. Didn't work. Now he's got to go for the field goal. Still a lot of time in this football game. Sharetti to attempt a 35 yard field goal. It's almost right in the middle of the field. And he missed it. Lucas with a good job of holding as that snap was a little high and inside. He did a good job to get it down, and they miss on the field goal attempt. So let's take a break. 2.23 left in the third. Davis and Bowie, the setbacks behind Plump. Push in that league. They may try, they're going to push some of those teams. Pitch, curl will come over to make the tackle on Bowie, and it's going to be a third down. And now Mississippi State looking at about seven yards for the first down. Anthony Curl, the little light linebacker, 6'3, 205 pounds, takes this play on, number 42. Watch him come from the backside and now make the hit right at the line of scrimmage. Winford Tubbs, number 44, also in on the tackle. Got to cause a turnover here, Texas. Getting his call from Watson Brown again on the sideline. Now he has it. Two seconds left on the clock. He's not going to get it off. Just got it off. Hit by Reed and incomplete. Well, you're right. That thing was going double zeros just as the step came up. I'll tell you what, he's more fortunate that he didn't get that ball intercepted. Lance Gunn did not go for the interception. He was going for the kill shot. But Texas will again have great field position if they get any kind of return. Mike, that's only the second pass that Mississippi State has thrown in the second half. Jordan gets it away, and boy, he gets this one off well. Adams all the way back to the 22-yard line. And for such a great kick, normally you outkick your coverage. Mississippi State also got the super coverage as Davidson was downfield to make the stop. Well, they went for the block. They didn't have any kind of return. When you go for a block, your return man's on his own. 54 yards on the punt. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Well, only 74 seconds left in this third quarter. And you know, Mike, the interesting thing, now where they have the ball right now is going to bring it down, but up to this point, Texas has an average of field position of their own 43 in the third quarter and no points to show for it. The key is, you're right, Ron, the key is Mississippi State's playing a lot of zone and didn't give them a big play. They made them work the field and made them make some mistakes. Gardere ran into his own blocker. He's going to wind up with about six yards. Mike, see, here's the thing. On that gain right there, Texas is going to have, in the third quarter, 93 yards to only three by Mississippi State. With the big mistake, that interception that led to the touchdown. So you could just, 
it negates all this as far as the numbers. Oh, totally. The, the, the two interceptions have really hurt. But you've got to credit Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator in Mississippi State. They're, they're bending, but they're not breaking, and that's their philosophy on defense. in the air and is intercepted by Charlie Davidson. Nope, they say he dropped it. Didn't hold on to it. Sorry. Pinkney is a man that they were going for. He got bumped pretty well as the ball got there and it just cost it to go straight in the air. They got him sandwiched in on a two deep coverage. He ran a little fade as he came out in a two deep coverage. He tried to get in between the defenders. You see him stretch out there. Number five, Kelvin Knight knocked the ball up in the air and as the old tip drill, Charlie Davidson, 24, almost came up with it. Tell you another story about Pinckney. He told some of his teammates, I'm sure Tom Penders will love to hear this, that he also would like to try to play basketball here if he could. 6'5, <laughs> he, he has big body, yeah. good hands. 222. Don't know if he can put it in the basket. I don't know if John would go for that though, huh? Pass to Walker. Did he have uh, possession? I don't know. Yeah, they're going to say he did. Jackie Sherrill was right there saying that he was bobbling the ball. The only thing Jackie doesn't have, he's got a little more expensive shirt in those referees. Ron, they can't, they've just had a lousy percentage on third down. Their third down conversions, we'll check it here in a second, but it's just been lousy for Texas. They just have not been able to keep moving the chains and keep going. Texas has only converted one third down situation all night. Flanahan off the side of his foot. Down at the 32 yard line, and there's a marker at the 31. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Well, Ron, for those people who say that Texas lacks a lot of national champions, I say look no further than junior Justin Leonard, who gained over 7,000 yards the last time you played. How is that possible? Um, well, this last week I, I won the, the U.S. Amateur Championship, and, and that's about how long the course was. That's golf clubs now? Yes, sir. All right, what does that championship allow you to do now? Um, I'm able to play in the Masters and the U.S. Open and the British Open and then five other PGA Tour events. They don't call penalties on you like they do here, Ron? <laughs> okay. Congratulations to Justin. You know, the interesting thing, Adrian, the U.S. Open winner comes from this city as well, Tom Kite. And uh, he will play golf. Uh, he'll team up with Tom Kite in the, in the Open next year. Ron, it looks like it's a holding call in Texas. And I, if I was Mississippi State, I'd make him go back and... Yeah, he, he gives them some uh, some possibilities that they haven't had in the past. He is a really fine football player. We well, just think of that game Thursday night. There'll be a lot of offense in that football contest. San Diego State and BYU. So they'll kick it again, and Tony James hoping that he will get an opportunity this time. Mississippi State has their return on. On the run. Have about six on the return, 33 yards on that punt. It's Livingston who got downfield to make the tackle, and there's one tick left on the clock in this third quarter. Mike, that's the one thing that the Jackie Sherrill did tell me last night during their walkthrough that I don't think they've been able to do Doug as much as they would have liked. And of course, the injury to Sleepy tackle. has precluded ball it from happening. But he said he wanted to get the, the ball in the hands of, uh, of uh, Jones more often just because of what all he could do. We talked about his wide receivers too. They were very effective in the first quarter, but since that time, they haven't been able to get the ball out to the wide people. Yep, Tony James is the man that he said we just want to get the football to him as often as we can. This is Kenny Roberts. Glad to see him back in the football game. He left just a while ago, and undoubtedly it was just cramps. So that is the end of the third quarter. Mississippi State still with a 12-point lead. Well, the final 15 minutes of play as Mississippi State continues to lead in this ball game, 22 to 10. And uh, Gardier, as you look at Sleepy Robinson, for those who joined us late, an injury to him, a deep thigh bruise. We're not going to see him again tonight. And with road games coming up at LSU and Memphis State, we won't see him again tonight. And for Gardier, well, we'll talk more about that in just a moment as far as how much more playing time do you think he's going to get tonight? Right now, it's clock. Up 
Jackson. The pitch back to Roberts gets by Watler, and Watler will come back and retrieve him, but not before he picks up the first down. Now here you're in a perfect defense. Leon Fuller with a perfect call. You get Kevin Kevin Watler up the field, number 47, but Roberts has such speed. Now watch, number 47, Kevin Watt. Wadler gets up the field. Now look, he's in perfect shape here to make the tackle. He's just the speed of number 29. Kenny Roberts gets him to the corner. I don't think you're going to see Mississippi State throw the ball. Not take a lot of chances. They're playing so well on defense. This becomes a running game for them now. Time of possession in the third quarter. Texas 11-02. Mississippi State 358. But the interception and another mistake was the difference. Roberts breaks it. Almost broke it for the touchdown, kept his footing, and it's a gain of 13 yards. And the guy who got a hand on it was Watler. He may have saved six. He did. I'm not so sure that on the sideline, the last time they went over there, Watson Brown probably, along with Jackie Searle, said to that big veteran offensive line, hey, we're going to turn it over. It's a run football game right now. We're turning it over to you. Let's just knock them off the ball, run inside. We'll mix it up a little bit with the option, keep the ball on the ground, run the clock, and let's try to wear them out. Roberts now with 87 yards on 11 carries. Option with Plump again. He pitches it to Roberts. Has the first down and two, three, four yards more. Cabna shoved him out of bounds, but they are inside the 15-yard line. Quick reaction by Greg Plump. They ran the option into the short side of the field. Away from the strong safety, able to kick it outside, pick up good yardage. There's Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator. He has now has to heat him up. He's got to come with some pressure against Mississippi State. He's got to bring some linebackers. Because he's facing an all-out running assault. Avoided disaster. Todd Hunt is the man who made the hit. He was going to be a starter for this ball game. Injured a neck in the early part of the week in the ball game, and he made the stop. Lucky bounce by Greg Plump, number 10, as he comes out to start the option, puts the ball in the fullback, and he just left it go too far. Ball bounced right up and right back to him. Number 94, Todd Hunt was there. Boy and Davis, two very big backs. I think they give it to the tailback here. Still running. Pitch to Bowie. And that's a good open field stop by Winford Tubbs. Caught him by the ankle and tripped him up. And then all of a sudden, you could see uh, number 42, Anthony Curl, come into the picture. And he helped finish him off. Well, you want to be an option quarterback. You, you want to be that guy that takes the ball down the line of scrimmage. Watch number 10, Greg Plump, get uh, kissed there by Bo Robinson, number 45, with his helmet. Uh, that's the kind of lick you take if you take that ball down the line of scrimmage as a wishbone guy and pitch it underhand. But a nice job by Greg Plump getting the ball off into the corner. I still don't think they throw here. I think they still run the football. Play action, throws it, and it is caught. Touchdown, Willie Harris. Showed a lot of confidence. Flag is down, back behind the quarterback. Well, what a catch by Willie Harris. Offensive holding. So erase Harris's second touchdown catch of the night. Thought they'd keep the ball on the ground again and just set themselves up for the field goal, but Jackie Sherrill took the chance. Threw the ball and a nice completion. Greg Plump put something on that ball. Had a nice hard throw. We have holding on the offense. We had 10 yard penalty. Replay the down. Now you think draw or screen. I still am not. If, I, if I'm Jackie Sure, I'm not putting the ball up again. I'm going to run the football. Set the field goal. 12-31 to play in the ballgame. Mississippi State 22, Texas 10. Watch him throw for a touchdown. Knocked down and almost.
almost intercepted by Willie Mack Garza. Boy, the free safety from Refurio was cutting over and going to make his, himself a pickoff, and he couldn't well, he hold on. Broke right in front of Olanda Truitt. Should have had this interception. Third and long, Greg Plump, wobbly pass. Look at this ball. Should have been intercepted. Willie Mack just couldn't hold on to it. Broke on the ball nice, just couldn't hold on to the interception. Gardner with an attempt of 42 yards. He already has one from 44 tonight. It is good. So Chris Gardner with his second field goal of the night. This one from 42 yards. And the Bulldogs of Mississippi State have taken a lead of 25 to 10. Vanderford had no idea that we would get those legs on national cable tonight. He needs to put some pants on. <laughs> Someone said in the truck, had he known he would have shaved them. Adrian Walker. Hurdles out of the 30 to the 32 yard line. Set screen to the short side of the field. Walker across the 40, off around the 41. He is brought down by number five, Gilman tonight. One of the things that is missing with this Texas offense, Mike, is the leading rusher for the last two years, Butch Hadnot, an academic casualty. Well, the thing about John Makovic, he never had. Uh, James had not. He wasn't here in the spring for practice. Butch had not. Yeah. Butch had not. And he didn't get a chance to see him. Uh, so he really doesn't know a lot about his ability, but he lost a great running back, a kid who had a potential to be a big time running back. Walker behind Brockemeyer again. Stephen Henry on the stop, and it looks like, oh no, Walker's just having to wait until they unpile. I thought for a moment he was shaken up. I don't know if anybody could play better than Adrian Walker's plan tonight for the Texas offense. He really plays under control, doesn't he, as far as all the way. 65 yards, but in pass catching and everything else, very complete ball player. Five yards of carry, over five yards of carry. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. Having a nice night for Texas. Mississippi again. Mississippi State making them work the field. Trying not to give them any big plays. Gardere too high and oh my goodness should have been intercepted Kelvin Knight hitting right in the breadbasket. Whoa you got a feel for Peter Gardere because what's going through he's trying to make something happen. He's trying to you see the crossing route and he just throws it over the head of the receiver Kelvin Knight number five Mike James number seven in coverage but sometimes the more you press the, the ball just seems to take off on him. 17 of 29, 185 yards, two interceptions. Oh, wow. Gonna go long. Walker is there. Oh my goodness, and he just led him too much. Oh boy. As I look at that sideline, they, there's so much frustration on the Texas sideline right now because of the little mistakes they've been making. But that's what happens in a coaching change. The first year, the first game, no one's really comfortable with each other. And you can just tell the tension on the sideline and the frustration on this pass. And you know what? I think you can look at that pass right there. Now the wind has picked up a little bit behind him. But when you see the reaction, he's pressing. He's pressing more than a little bit. Because probably would throw that same pattern in practice 10 times and hit it 9 of 10. If not 10 of 10. There's a there's a period of time where you become comfortable with the your new coach. Hey, hey these guys were all recruited by a different staff. Uh, these guys just all of a sudden appeared here as new coaches and it's difficult the first game the first year. 10 55 left in the ball game. 
25 to 10 Mississippi State injury to one of the defensive backs. We'll get a report on James in just a moment. Well, we take a look at the Mississippi State bench. Mike James, as I mentioned, the junior from Pahokee, Florida, who is a junior college transfer at Mississippi State, went down and uh, twisted a knee as he tried to make the recovery on that pass play just a moment ago. So Davidson, Charlie Davidson, who's a sophomore out of Dilton, Alabama, comes in replacing him. You got LaBelle Pink in the 80 against Davidson. Now you try him out right on this play. Good time as any, probably. Gardere's pass is caught over the middle by Mike Adams. And let's get an update on that injury, Adrian Karsten. Injury to Mike James, Ron, is a strained right knee. They're placing ice on it as I speak. He will not play anymore tonight. Okay, Adrian, thank you. 10.40, left in the ball game. This ball game in favor of Texas are just going to be totally lopsided. But the interception and then a penalty on a touchdown to turn into a field goal, the difference in the second half. Gardere just again too much. Now, Mike, let's go ahead and and, and talk about what John Makovic is going to be confronted with this week as he tries to get ready for, for a very good Syracuse team. The question's going to come up again. What do you do at quarterback? Well, they're always going to bring that question up. We've talked about it all night, but you, you look at the receivers. He's playing two young guys, Lavelle Pinkney, 80, and Mike Adams, 83. Uh, there comes a time, you know, when you're a new coach in a new group that you, that you take a look at your team, your veteran guys, and you start trying to work some of the younger guys in. But it's a little too early to do that yet. Screen to the near side. It's Roderick Walker. Caught from behind. Boy, Keith Joseph, who had that interception back in the third quarter, just ran him down from behind. That is a fine defensive play. On with 10.06 left, there's still a lot of time for Texas. I mean, Texas can still win this football game. If Peter Gardner can get him in here and put a put tack seven or eight on the board right here, now you're a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from beating them. So uh, this game's far from over. Now that ball's on the 32-33 uh, yard line. So Peter Gardier has an opportunity to take this offense in and get right back in this game. Because Mississippi State's not moving the ball as effectively as they once have. Walker out of that stack eye formation. Daniel Boyd from his middle linebacking spot will stop him. I mean, 932 here at Texas is an eternity. <laughs> Jack Leach, report to the stadium office. Jack Leach, report Mike to the Adams comes office. back into the lineup as a tight end David Bearden. Texas had gone with the two tights. Comes back to the sideline. Well, the quarterback is going to get blamed no matter what, but it's execution, your entire unit. Open long, just over Neal's fingers. Through the corner route to Kenny Neal, faked the post and broke to the corner. Peter Gardier, watch Kenny Neal, number six. He's going to break to the post. Now the post, now the fake, then the break to the corner. Number five, Kelvin Knight, sitting in two deep coverage, is in pretty good shape, but that ball could have been completed. Just over the outstretched hands of Kenny Neal. Defensive holding was called on the play, so Texas will pick up the first down, and the new line of scrimmage will be just inside the 19. I think Texas has a great opportunity right here. Get a big break on this penalty. Pitch to walk. Bill Brown blocking, and he goes inside the 15 down to the 14. And Mississippi State comes away with the football, and yes, it is the Bulldogs' ball. That's Juan Long. Fumbled in the middle of that pileup, and the officials say yes, it is Mississippi State ball. Juan Long, number 40. 
20 points number 41 the first man to walker on that last play see 36 Adrian walker ball comes out before he's down Number 40, Juan Long on the recovery. But Latif Travis, I believe, will knock Number this loose. Juan Long recovering that last fumble. Well, actually, he was just ran into his own his man, own man. And the ball just came yeah. loose. First and ten. Latif was in the vicinity. Nine minutes exactly left in the game. Gino Toretta, first game that he played on ESPN. He lost to Florida State in a Huge battle down at, uh, at Florida State's backyard. Option to the short side of the field. Roberts close to the first down, and he's going to be picked up and shoved back. Grady Cadmus, the first guy to get there. Mississippi State has worked very successfully into the short side of the field. They're running at linebacker Anthony Curl, number 42. And Adrian Karsten has something for us down on the sideline. Adrian? Ron, look at who I found just out of San Antonio. Coach Jerry Tarkanian, uh, new head coach of the Spurs. Coach, have you shed your tennis shoes for boy boots here? What's going on? Well, you know, when you go to Texas, you got to dress like a Texan. I got my boots now, and I learned how to give them the hook them horn sign, and next thing I'll do is get a cowboy hat. All right now, Coach, you know they chew tobacco around here. They're not chewing on towels now. I'll tell you what, the way this weather is, this towel would come in handy today. Back to the booth. Number 21, Jake Galloway. The Tark as Tay Galloway breaks it open big and he's out across the 40 yard line. Willie Mac Garza was just holding on for life. Tark is one of San Antonio. He needs one of those big hats on his head. If he's going to stay in the sun out here, that's that's for sure. Offensive line of Texas. They have played well tonight. And I, I'm sure that, you know, they have questions that they're asking about what are the little flaws that have come up within the system tonight. Well, they've had people open. They've had opportunities. <laughs> Kenny Roberts, the senior out of Hamilton, Mississippi, takes it across the 46 down to the 45-yard line. Ron, you're not going to see some immediate changes offensively. You're going to see little changes here and there. But again, when you take spring practice, I think you have 15 practice opportunities there. You have 29 opportunities before your first game. So this team's got a lot of practice to go and uh, to improve. Huge win by Tulsa tonight, 28-25 over Houston. Galloway breaks it, gets pounded. Garza holding on again, but that's that's a gain of almost nine yards in the play. You know, Tulsa's been tough on Southwest Conference teams. They handed AM an early season loss last year, which was big. I think, don't they play this coming week now? Tulsa and Texas AM. I believe they play this yeah. week, but uh, I look for Texas AM to go 12 0 and then to, to play in the championship or to have a chance to play in the national championship. There's the domination right there, Mike. Mississippi State, 218 yards. Texas, 98 for the ball game. The running game of Mississippi State. Michael Davis sliding off the left side, down around the 33. Now, speaking of Tark, he's got a little period of indoctrination coming. Excellent, excellent basketball coach. Nobody knows X's and O's any better than he, but to go from the college to the pro ranks, he's got a, a maturation period to, to go through. Well, when they play on Monday night and Tuesday night, he has a chance to lose more games than he did in his entire career at uh, UNLV. <laughs> he's going to have to get used to losing. I'll tell him you said that when he comes No, he's going to win, but I mean, you play so many games, you're going to lose a few. <laughs> okay. Clarified. Option to the near side. Kenny Roberts gets by one tackler. Again, Willie Mac Garza really having to do a lot of work for that free safety spot. And Mike, right now, Mississippi State with Roberts is picking up almost 10 yards a try. They, they've just controlled, they've taken over this ball game in the third quarter. They're wearing down the Texas defense. They're banging them away inside the tackles. Kenny Roberts, 17 rushes, 127 yards. Uh, a lot of that on the option pitch, but again, everything's been set up. Inside, 
outside play action pass. Mississippi, Mississippi State's offensive game plan. Now Watson Brown's going to be very proud of it. Bowie with the handoff as he came in to spell Roberts for a few minutes, takes it for a couple. You know, Mike, one of the possibilities with Bowie being at 220 pounds and Michael Davis at 233, a couple of really big people for short yardage situations for Mississippi State, another luxury that they had. Well, I think they do have so many big backs. You know, you look at Davis, you look at, uh, like you said, Bowie, and when you have that kind of size, I mean, and, and they have that offensive line size, that are so aggressive run blockers, your running game is going to be fine. Run to the short side, that'll go for two, maybe three yards. I'll tell you, with Ole Miss pulling that huge win tonight over Auburn and scoring 45 points, and, and Mississippi State four minutes and 30 seconds away from defeating Texas here, I wonder who's going to garner the largest headline tomorrow. And you can believe it, Jackie Sherrill will look long and hard at that score by Ole Miss winning the handily over Auburn. I think they'll probably split it. It's just a big win for Mississippi State, and of course, for Mississippi to open up against Auburn, a, a perennial power, and to, to blow them out like they did. So, uh, but I'll tell you one thing, you're right, when Jackie Sherrill picks up the paper tomorrow, he's gonna notice it. You know, that's a, that's a series I wish somehow we could wind up down the road getting on. Mississippi State and Ole Miss, that's a great rivalry. Holds on to it. He'll go for maybe one yard. And it's going to be fourth down from across the way. Chris Gardner will come on and try to add three more. Had the reverse on, Ron, and uh, too much penetration by the Texas defense. Didn't allow Greg Plump to get the pitch off. 44, and now they've said 41 officially on that last one that he kicked. Chris Gardner. Officially a 34 yard attempt. And he is perfect for the night. Three for three. So let's take a break. 317 left, and it's Mississippi State. 28 to 10. Well, Mississippi State leads it 28 to 10. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. Here in Austin, Texas, next week, Clemson, South Carolina, the Seminoles and the Tigers. This is Mike Adams. Oh, good, good hit. Adams is getting up and is trotting back to the huddle, and I can't believe it. Boy, what a collision. Michael Adams on the return. Watch the hit. Wow. Frankie Lester, number four. Adrian Karsten, you were close to it. What did you hear? Well, heard a lot of popping going on. Very happy state bench, but also very concerned bench because the third key injury now to the Bulldogs is to John James at 6'3", 295 with the right hamstring. Last thing they can afford to do is lose him going into LSU next week. And to update what he's talking about, Sleepy Robinson had to go to the bench, did not play here in the second half. We noticed him limping just before halftime, and he has a serious thigh bruise on the left leg. There's James, look at him. Longhorns will go for the shotgun formation. Gardier to the near sideline, has it complete to Eric Jackson. Breaks it back into the middle of the field, out to the 30-yard line. Scott Gamita, defensively for Mississippi State. As I mentioned, next week, uh, our crew will be in Clemson, South Carolina. Florida State and Clemson. Definitely one to look forward to. Another flat, this time to Adrian Walker to the 36. Andre Bennett, who's a sophomore out of Brandon, Mississippi, out there to make the stop. Mississippi State will be very content to give him those little passes. As long as that clock runs. They're 
have dared to run and has the luxury, of course, of the sideline being there to step out at the 48. Andre Bennett, again, defensively. Three-man rush, eight people in coverage. All Peter Gardier had at that point was to run the football. Here's John Makovic. you got to be thinking a little bit about what you're going to say when you go in that locker room. And, you know, what do you tell them? Because they had opportunities tonight. I think, that, I think that's exactly what you tell them. We did have opportunities. We didn't execute. We got beat by a good football team. Let's and a go better look. football team than they. Yeah, let's go look at the tape tomorrow. We'll grow from this game. We'll take all the good parts, and we'll keep doing them. We'll take the bad parts and try to eliminate them. And next week's another chance. It's the great thing about football. You get another shot here next week. But unfortunately, you got to go to the carrier. Hard to say, Coach McAvick might not agree with you as far as the length of time, but he has to get ready for a very fine Syracuse football team. Coming up next, the college scoreboard. You know what Mike Patrick called those guys the other day in the college scoreboard? The moles, the three moles. They said they ne never get out of the studio. <laughs> Baseball tonight immediately following the scoreboard as Gardier gets away from the potential sack. But he won't get away from this attempt, and it's Arlie Gibson who will knock him down at the 40. Jerome Brown was the first man who was putting all the pressure on Gardere. The clock continues to run. We'll go Number under nine, two minutes to play. As we mentioned, Texas goes to the Carrier Dome. Number and for Mississippi State, they travel to Baton Rouge. In fact, then they're on the road the next week at Memphis State. Memphis State was beaten today by Southern Mississippi. A big win for Southern Mississippi in the first game. Then, it, uh, then they get October 1st, I believe, on a Thursday night, ESPN Florida at Mississippi State. So it's a tough early schedule for Mississippi State. A couple of people that were injured in this ball game tonight to... I can't believe Jackie's arguing with the referee. You better look at the scoreboard, Jack. You're ahead 28-10. You may get this fellow again. Tonight's piece of players of the game are for Mississippi State. Kenny Roberts, we gave you his numbers just a moment ago. 127 yards on the evening on 17 carries. And from Texas, Adrian Walker. 75 yards, 14 carries for him. It's part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics. Visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of each of these athletes. Gardier hit. That's going to be a fumble. And it has been recovered by Texas. Jerome Brown is the man who caused the fumble. And it was Jay Bulware who made the recovery. Spanky Stevens and the Texas trainers came out on the field to check out Gardier, but he's up and coming off their zone power. Ron, no one blocked Jerome Brown. You know, you talk about efficiency of a quarterback. When you get hit like that, I mean, he never had a chance to get that ball away. Jerome Brown, six foot five, 270 pound senior, just hit him from the blind side. Tony James is the deep man again for Mississippi State as McClanahan prepares to kick. 110 left of the ball game. Oh, this is a boomer. Good heavens. Gonna hit at the two and will stay in the field of play. That's unbelievable. It looked like a good a good wedge or nine iron there. That was it beautiful. checked up beautifully. Beautiful punt. Fifty-seven yards of the punt as you get a good look at Jerome Brown. Also 28, Houston, 25. Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator for Mississippi State, former head coach at Rice, former head coach at Vanderbilt. And last year, his offensive team came up with the upset over Texas. And tonight, they have scored 28 points and are on the way to giving Jackie Sherrill another win over the Longhorns. It's going to be seven in a row, five straight at Texas A&M, and now two at Mississippi State.
clock is running and the Bulldogs will have to take one snap and that'll do it. John Makovic knows now he's going to go look at this tape and find the things that they need to improve on. Well, smoky sounds, but it is not in a victorious moment for the Texas Longhorns because Jackie Sherrill, as he is given a ride by his Mississippi State Bulldogs, has defeated the Texas Longhorns seven straight times. Tonight's final is Mississippi State 28 and the University of Texas 10.